Welcome to this Saturday's edition of the Dr. Casey Show. I am your host, sports psychologist, Dr. Casey Cooper. This show is about excellence in sports and life. I showcase the stories about athletes you won't find anywhere else, at least not in, not with my take on things anyway. And the Dr. Casey Show on AM830 takes an in-depth look at the stories behind the amazing performances we all get to see and love. I'm raising awareness to unlock the secrets that make champions consistent and teams' families. Now, in the past several months, I've featured some stories that really defy the odds, but today's guests really take things to a new level. A local story coming out of El Toro High School, their boys' basketball program that I first read about in the register. And I'd really like to take a moment to say that I really do appreciate and love our local columnists who bring us stories like Jimmy Albright and Coach Dixon. I love it when writers like Mark take the time to write inspirational pieces, so thank you so much. Today on the Dr. Casey Show, a varsity boys basketball player, a starting center, a league champion, and oh yes, did I mention that he happens to be legally blind? That's right, you heard me correctly. Now, once I read this story, I had so many questions just like you, and I wondered, what can Jimmy really see on the court, and, and how did he learn the movements and the game of basketball? How does Coach Dixon uh, adjust to enhance his team's chemistry around Jimmy, if he adjusts anything at all? So. I invited Jimmy and his coach, Todd Dixon, to the studio to continue their story and help us understand the science behind their success. In just a moment, the pride of El Toro High School will be joining me to share more on this story, so do not go anywhere, trust me. In fact, Jimmy is attracting so much attention that CBS Sports is following him around. The man already has a media entourage in the studio today. Fabulous. To start today's show, in honor of my guest, a Psychology 101 opportunity that I could hardly resist sensation and perception. So I, I want to talk a little bit about what is sensation and perception. How do you experience the world around you and does your reality match mine? This was always a favorite chapter of my Psychology 101 students actually and I'm going to give you a five-minute version of a two-hour lecture so bear with me. The world is actually a unique experience for us, for each of us, every day. What is cold to me as a native of Mission Viejo is warm to my brother-in-law, Devin, who's a true Minnesotan. What is clearly a penalty to you is just an assertive play to the referee. An opportunity to Jimmy may be an overwhelming obstacle to someone else. But how? What creates these differences within our worlds? Shouldn't my experience of the weather be the same as Devin's? Well, answers begin when you start with your senses, the basic five, and pretty much expand from there. It can be a physical conversation or a philosophical journey. But for the sake of time, let's start with our senses, all right? I'm not going to get too grandiose here. And don't worry, I'll bring it back to sports, I promise. The basics are what we can hear, what we can see, what we can taste, what we can touch, and what we can smell. And they're dependent on a very few basic factors, detection, interpretation, and meaning. So let's use sound as an example since you're activating that right now by listening to the show. You detect or hear the sound with your ears and the complex system of canals that you have in, in your inner ear. Now, then that detected message of vibrations is sent to the part of your brain that interprets the sound. Finally, your brain decides what it all means. So basically, the vibrations get detected, they get sent to the brain, and you think, wow, that was great music, or... I absolutely do not understand a word of that song. We've all had that experience. It, it sounds simple, right? Well, it's anything but simple. If you're just tuning in, this is the Dr. Casey Show on AM 830 with the Psychology 101 moment. Coming up, the real-life example of sensational Jimmy Albright and his coach, Todd Dixon. Okay, so I'll wrap up this Psychology 101 moment about sensation and perception. The process of detection and assigning meaning seems so simple. So how can the world be felt so differently to so many people? 
the first place that we can actually differ in the way that we experience the world is if your sense organs are functioning at different levels. So your ears, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, even your skin, because that's how you um, experience the world, tac world tactily, you know. Now, I used the example of hearing a moment ago. So music sounds different if it's muffled due to damage. If you hang around radio people or DJs long enough, you'll realize that they can hardly hear anything anymore. It's true. Many fight it, but they all share one thing in common. They turn the volume way up. In fact, I remember my first show with the Cannons back when it really was the Cannons um, with Steve and Vic and Michael. And I put my headphones on and it was absolutely instant pain because they had their volumes turned up so high just to hear one another. And they didn't realize that, you know, I had sensitive ears, I guess you could say. Now, I know I'm digressing, but you get the idea. If your detection is off, the world is different to you. And the guys, the cannons, well, they just forget that they're loud because it's normal to them. Now, the next step in this process is interpretation. There is some difference there. Now, don't assume that everyone's brain is getting the message. So generally, this is a problem with structure or a complication following an injury to the brain, but sometimes the ears hear it, the eyes see it, the legs feel it, but the brain doesn't get the full message. If maybe sometimes it doesn't get the message at all. Now finally, and, and the most complex part of this issue of difference is the end result of assigning meaning to it all. After your brain gets the data from the rest of your body and decides what it means to you, I mean, deciding what it means, that's the end result. That is what we base all of our behavior and our decisions on. And, and that can be impacted by so many factors, like your past experience, your history, your emotional state at the time that you experienced something, your body's chemistry or your physiology. Maybe you were altered because of substances or low blood sugar. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. So in the end, what sounds like a genius beat with inventive lyrics to your neighbor may be the equivalent of angry noise to you. That's the meaning, and most of the time that's all that really seems to matter. Why bother with this breakdown today on the Dr. Casey Show? Well, I'd like to encourage you that the next time you find yourself making a snap judgment during sports, stop and ask yourself, are you absolutely sure the other person or people saw it the same way as you? Perhaps there was a difference in their sensing or their perception that can better explain the discrepancy, the distance that now exists between you. Perhaps if we all asked ourselves that question, before we argued with our coach or yelled at a ref or shook our heads at a teammate, the world of sports and our performances would be the better for it. Need proof? Well, coming up after this break, a real-life example of limited sensation but limitless success. Jimmy Albright. He'll be joining me with head coach Todd Dixon right after the break. You're listening to The Dr. Casey Show only on AM830, streaming live on the World Wide Web at am830.net. I'll be right back. 